Hi guys, Kotyutar here and my name is Anil Deshpande. In the previous video, you have seen that how we concluded to make our overall working with OKHTTP OK better, we need to have only one single OKHTTP OK client. All the requests need to be routed through that OKHTTP OK client. In this particular video, we will try to understand how this code can be refactored. If you have a look at the current existing code that we have written, the first aspect is creating the OKHTTP OK client. Second aspect is creating the request and then making a call using that particular request. So if you think about it, the very first part, which is OK HTTP client, this code can be part of a single parent class and this parent class can extend runnable. And then finally, this will act as a factory class for different request types. When I say request types, it is register, author, add, to, do, remove, delete, these kind of different requests that we will be making from our app. All of those requests will be extending this particular parent class. Let's have a look at how the refactored class would look like. So here you have a class called as app network request and the first thing that you will notice is we have a static final instance of OK HTTP client which has been initialized once. The next part is we have a response object which is nothing but an object. This will help us to hold whatever the responses that we are getting from the APIs. It could be an author object, it could be a to do object or a list of to do object, everything. We will be using this particular object to hold all those API responses. We have a enum called as request type. Request type will basically help us to identify which particular type of request we are making whether it is a register author, login author, add a to do or get to do lists. We will be using this particular enum type across the application. For example, the first instance that you will see is there is a method called as get request instance. The first argument it takes is a request type. Depending upon the request type, we decide which particular app network request object we will be instantiating. The next part is API call listener. This is nothing but a callback interface. It has two methods. One is all callback success and on callback failure. This is a user defined callback interface. Any activity or a fragment which wants to do API calls and respond to success or failure of the API calls need to implement this particular interface and overwrite these methods. The next part is we have a handler. Now the question is why do we need a handler in this particular class? Well, the reason is our class actually implements a runnable instance. So it will be running on a separate thread. So if at all you want to go back from a thread to a UI thread, you need a handler on a main looper thread. This looks all fine, but where are we building the request object and where are we actually calling API? Well, if you pay attention, app network request is an abstract class because it has got an abstract method called as make backend request. We will be actually implementing a, another class which will be extending this app network request and that is where you will be seeing the actual code to construct the request object and make a API call. So let's understand how we have refactored our code through a demo. So this is the same application that you have seen in the previous demo. Only the difference is now I have refactored the code and this is what the app network request looks like. And if you observe, this is the constructor and we are initializing the handler with main looper. And then we are also initializing the API call listener. And then we have get request instance method, which is a public static method. It is this particular method that will be invoked by the fragment or the activity to get the app network request object. The first argument is the requested type, basically representing different kind of API calls that we would like to make. The second argument is the callback interface. The third argument is the request body. If at all, this particular request will have a body. If you observe, register author will have a request object and we have defined a private method where we will be constructing the actual request register author. So the first thing that we will do is typecast the request body object to a author and then pass that as the second argument converted into a JSON string. And if you go inside the constructor of request register author, this is the class where we will be actually implementing the whole request and the callback handling. So let's get started. I have a UI 
URL for the author registration. I have a request object which we will be initializing in a bit. And this is what the constructor looks like. It is the API call listener and the JSON request body. Let's call the super constructor which basically goes back here to the app network requests constructor initializing the handler and the API call listener and then we will start initializing the request. This particular code pretty much looks like the earlier request construction. You pass the URL and then pass the header which is content type and JSON application. The next part is invoking a post and you are telling it is a JSON content type and json request body dot to string which will convert it into a json string and then finally you create a dot build invocation and that is the creation of the request but since request register author extends app network request which implements runnable and also is an abstract class so we need to provide the implementation of make backend request so let's continue to do that so first thing is override make backend request and then create a thread and invoke dot start but we need to override the run method and inside the run method we will be actually invoking the ok http client dot new call pass the request object and nq and callback will be having two methods one is on failure and in the on failure we will have to report that something went wrong but that has to be done using handler dot post method because right now we are not on the ui thread we have to go back to the ui thread so to report that we will use handler dot post it will have a runnable instance and in the runnable instance we will use api call listeners callback method on callback failure and pass the whatever the message we got as a part of the exception and then the other method is on response in the on response we will have to parse whatever the response that we have got so it can lead to some kind of io exception that is why we will write everything in the try catch block in the try catch block the possibilities are the response code for the register author could be 201 which is a success or else it could be something else so let's handle the exception part first we will construct a error object error object is nothing but a bean class containing the error code and error message and we will just pass some error code and whatever the exception message that we got and if the response code is 201 that means we have got a successful response so we will use the json library to construct the author class because that is what the response would be and initialize the response object else that means something went wrong so we will just create a error object response code whatever that we have got as the first argument and the response message that we got as a second argument and we create the error object so we have got the response now it is time to send this response back to the whoever called this in the first case which could be a activity or a fragment well to do that we will have to use api listener on callback success so once again it would be handler.post it will have a runnable instance and then inside the runnable instance i will write api call listener dot on callback success the request type is request register author and the second argument is the response object the response object object would contain either a error object or it can contain the actual useful object that we got as a response so this is about the implementation of the request register author class now let us understand how to use this in the register dialog fragment to actually make these calls well this particular part of the code becomes pretty easy now register dialog fragment will have to implement the api call listener the first thing that we will do is whatever the earlier ok http code that we had written which was unrefactored now we will write with the refactored code we will invoke app network request dot get request instance the request instance that we need is request register author type that is the first enum argument the second argument is api call listener so in this case it is the current class which implements api call listener that is why i am passing this as the argument and the third one is the author object which will be sent as a part of the request body and then let Later, make backend request method invocation on the app network request object and now we will have to override methods for the api call listener 
there is a on callback success and inside the on callback success we will have to close the progress bar and dismiss the dialog and in between those two statements the response that we get could be a author object or it could be a error object so there is a possibility that we will get a class cast exception so we need to handle that if it is a class cast exception we will have to type cast it into an error object and then show a toast with whatever the error message that we have got in the error object otherwise it will successfully type cast it into an author and we will even toast it another thing that we need to make sure is we have to send this author to the activity because right now we are in a dialogue fragment and from the dialogue fragment we need to send this author object to the activity so that it will do the next processing part there in the activity so we will check whether registration listener is not equal to null and if it is not equal to null we will just pass the author object to the registration listener on registration success callback in case of on callback failure we just want to toast the failure message and that's it so let's run this particular code and see how this behaves so my application is running now i will click on the register and since i am running it in the debug mode you should be able to just pause at each breakpoint and see what actually is happening so let me click on the register we will observe that first i will check whether the app is online and here now i will start constructing the app network request so request type is author api call listener which is the fragment and then the request body is the author and then inside i will go to the switch case and then i will invoke the get register request author which is this particular method i will construct the author object and then invoke the request register author constructor so let's go to the constructor inside the request register author constructor once again we are calling the super constructor so that will go to the super class constructor where we are initializing the handler and the api listener and we come back we construct the request and the next line after the construction of the request is make backend request invocation so that is why you are seeing that now the breakpoint has stopped at new thread with this as the argument which is the runnable instance and then dot start that means we will now come over here in the run method we are now inside the run method and when we make the call it could be either on failure on on response that we will get so let us continue so we got a on response callback and inside the response we will check what is the code if it is 201 we will go inside and construct response object response object is nothing but a author object and then we will come to handler.host and in that we will actually pass response object that we want to send so when i continue i will come back to the register dialog fragments either on callback success and on callback failure so right now it is on callback success this is where the on callback success would come so first thing we do is progress bar we have to stop and then we should try to typecast it into author then we are checking whether registration listener is not equal to null it is not equal to null and then we are passing the author and that's it you are seeing a registration successfully in the same way we have implemented the login functionality and if you click on the login after entering the password you will observe that we have a dialog with logging in as the message and we are logging into a, another screen we will be of course be doing it in the same way we have seen already but there are few things that i want to talk about in a much more detailed manner in the next video so stay tuned that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye